Hi everyone, today we are going to work on making a hand that is filled with patterns. So the first thing I'm going to grab is my marker and I tend to use marker more just so that you can see it on my paper. You would want to use pencil first. This way you don't get marker all over your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread my fingers out as much as I can to give me space between them. I'm also going to make sure that my arm is resting flat on my table. Then to trace, this makes it a lot easier. You'll notice that as you watch my marker, you really only see the cap. That's because I'm trying to make sure that the cap is pointing right up to the ceiling. So if you are using a pencil, you want to make sure that your eraser is pointing right up to the ceiling. What I am also doing is I'm just barely touching the edges of my hand. So I'm not pushing really hard and I'm not trying to go under my hand. So if my marker was slanted, if I was holding it normally, it would look like this, but my marker would go under neath my hand and I would end up with a really skinny looking fingers. When you are tracing something, you want to make sure that you're holding your pencil or marker or crayon, whatever you have, straight up and down so it's pointing to the ceiling or the sky, not like you would normally hold it where now it's kind of pointing to the wall at my house. Okay, and I'm going to trace this all the way to the bottom of my paper. So you can kind of see that black line. I started at the bottom of my paper, went all the way up and around my hand. And when I take it away, I should have a hand that's just slightly bigger than my own because I went around it. Your hands are probably smaller. If you did yours closer to the bottom and you want to fit a second one, you absolutely can. Some people like doing theirs this way. So they fit a hand going in this direction and then they fit a hand going in the opposite direction as well. So they end up with two hands on their papers. And again, that is a choice. That is totally up to you. The next thing that I am going to do is a little bit backwards from what I would normally want us to do. Normally, I would have us do everything out in pencil first and then go in and color. But to make this a little bit easier for some of my younger students, we're going to color next. And what I want you to do is think about the color wheel. And if we really think about that color wheel, I have yellow at the top and then it switches to orange. So I have an orange. And then I have a red. Those are my warm colors. I have a violet. A blue. And a green. So this is my makeshift color wheel using pens and the pens that are a solid color those are our primary colors so I have red yellow and blue are my primary colors the pens that have just the colored caps those are our secondary colors so I have orange purple or violet and green so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose colors that are opposite each other. Those are called complementary colors. So you could easily choose red and green. See how they're kind of pointing to each other across the color wheel. I could do orange and blue and yellow and violet. Um, so it's really up to you as to which two colors you're going to want to do. And remember, just two, and I want them to be pointing to each other across the color wheel. Now, if you look over here, I have already chosen my two. I really like how orange and blue look together. So I am going to be using orange and blue for my complementary colors to color my paper. 
totally up to you as to which one you want to use first. I could do orange inside of the hand or blue inside of the hand. Totally your choice. One thing I want you to watch for is to make sure that you color nice and neat. Fill the whole entire space. Okay. You don't want to leave a bunch of white spaces and especially up by those fingers. You want to make sure that you stop at the edges to make sure that you are coloring nicely and neatly. So I'm going to finish coloring mine and then I will show you the next step in just a minute. Okay, now I've finished my coloring and you'll notice that I did blue in the background and my orange inside my hand. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're actually going to add some lines on this. We don't want to go too crazy with the lines though. Otherwise, it's going to be super confusing. So I'm going to add two lines going in the tall way, going vertically. And I'm going to add three lines going horizontally, but I'm going to make them wiggle just a little bit. So I'm going to go right from the top and I'm going to come in and wiggle just like this, just gentle. So that's one line that's going vertically because it's going up and down. That's the direction of the line. Now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. So now I have my paper divided into three sections if we're ignoring the hand and everything drawn in the background. I have one column, two columns, three columns. I find it easiest to turn my paper. If you want to continue to make wiggly lines, you are welcome to. If you would like to switch and make them kind of zigzag lines, you can do that too. I think that I'm going to make more wiggly lines, but instead of coming straight across, I'm going to slant mine just a little bit. Okay, so I have one. three. Now when I look at it, my hand is divided into different sections. This section though seems really, really big. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add another line in here just to kind of help break that up a little bit. So now, see how I've divided that up so it's not quite so big empty space looking. Um, I could do something similar up here as well, but I'm gonna start at the bottom, work my, up, my way up, and I might add another line. I'm not totally sure. What I am going to do is in each orange section, I am going to draw a different pattern. So I might do stripes in here, nice straight lines. So I'm just going to take my marker and if you have a Sharpie, this would work a bit better um, just because it will cover over that crayon a bit easier. If you have a regular marker, it might not show up as well. But another thing that you could easily use, number one, is you could use your pencil and press firmly, that would absolutely show up. You could also just use a black crayon right over this instead of using a black marker. So now I have a section that has stripes. Maybe I will add some hearts in this section. So a pattern is something that repeats. It does not always have to be two things that repeat. I know that, for example, in math class, they talk a lot about patterns 
and how you can have an A, B pattern. And absolutely, that is a pattern. So if you were to do star triangle, star triangle, totally a pattern. But this is also a pattern because I am repeating the same shape over and over. If you were just writing one out on almost like a number line, that also counts as a pattern. There, so sometimes math and art cross over a little bit. Now, a choice that you could have is to color in the hearts or you can just leave them empty. That's going to be your choice. Um, I think that here I am going to draw some zigzag lines and since I have lines going across this way maybe on this one I'm gonna make my zigzag lines go that way so you'll notice that I turn my paper a lot I tend to turn my paper to however it's gonna be most comfortable for me to draw on it understanding right now my artwork is sideways that's okay, because when I'm finished, I can just turn it right, right side up. And it doesn't matter how we get the job done. What matters is that we get the job done. And that we are proud and we do our very best work. So now I have some zigzag stripes. I think that I'm going to go in and add some more. So, I am going to continue to add some designs. Remember, this is your artwork. It does not need to be perfect. Yours does not need to look exactly the same as mine. In fact, it really shouldn't because you are the one doing it. If you are frustrated or if you are having a hard time, take a break for a minute. Maybe brainstorm some patterns on a different piece of paper and then come back to it. So I am stopping like where this line is. I know it's still part of my hand, but I'm stopping at the edge of that line so that I can make a different pattern in different parts of my hand. All right, I'm going to finish up designing my hand and I will check back in in a minute. Point. I have filled almost all of my spaces with different patterns and kinds of lines and designs. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, and I highly recommend that you do, going above and beyond is always a great choice. What you can do is once you're done filling in your hand, you can work on filling in the spaces of the background. But if you are having a hard time and you are maybe a friend who has struggled coming up with this many patterns, that's okay. Leave the background blank. It gives us a really nice, interesting detail inside the hand and it lets the background be a little bit more simple. Okay. I hope you enjoyed following along, practicing those patterns and shapes and different kinds of lines. Remember, we used complementary colors, colors that were opposite from each other on the color wheel. So that's a great vocabulary word is complementary color and pattern design, all of that. So I hope you enjoyed creating your own hand. I'd love to see what you create. Bye, everyone.